Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India lecture with a thought process and remembering that man is a curious and creative creature by nature but of course with the modern life people don't have time to think and let us uh, recapitulate that what we learnt in the last lecture in that we started with uh, what you call the properties and we looked at when it can be an exact differential so that we can call a variable as a property. And later on we moved into the uh, kinds of properties, intensive property and extensive properties and also the specific property, right, we defined and we took some example which will be helpful for analyzing thermodynamic system. Then I, we looked at the pressure and what is important, so also the how to measure, I have just touched upon some of the things and you should learn it, you know, how to measure. And today what we will be doing, we will be looking at various forms of energy. And let us ask a question, what do you mean by energy? And all of you know that it is basically the ability to do the work and there are several forms of energy that exist in nature like your kinetic energy, potential energy, thermal energy, mechanical energy, chemical energy, nuclear and so on and so forth. Right. <coughs> now this energy if you look at we will be dealing with. Now it can be classified you know into various forms but the sum of all the forms of energy we can use a symbol known as E you can use any other symbol as a matter of fact but generally people use E and uh, that unit will be in SI kilojoule, it can be megajoule you know kind of things or a joule simply <coughs> depending upon the you know like uh, amount of energy what you are dealing with and specific total energy E by M kilojoule per kg if you recall the energy is basically a an extensive property whereas the specific total energy is what? Intensive property, am I right? Because per unit mass. So as I told that uh, this energy can be broadly classified into two categories. One is macroscopic form of energy, other is microscopic form of energy. And microscopic uh, form of energy will be related to what related to the molecules, atoms and their inter, you know uh, their activities, the extent of activities whereas the macroscopic form of energy will be possessed by the system with respect to outside reference frame, right. And that what we will be dealing with in this thermodynamics, right. But however let us uh, look at it also the other aspect uh, of the microscopic uh, energy we will be discussing little bit and uh, the common form of microscopic form of energy is are basically kinetic energy and potential energy right. So let us look at kinetic energy and we will take uh, an example let us say a car which is moving with a certain velocity v right it is moving with certain velocity V. And if it is moving with certain velocity, it will be that means how it will be moving? Somebody should be applying a force, am I right? Otherwise, it won't move, right? Anything which is you know that means the car has to displace something. So, uh, we know the uh, according to the Newton's second law, the force is basically is equal to mass 
into acceleration when it is velocity you know like it will be either at a constant speed or it will be accelerating or it will be decelerating right it can be anything but let us say that force basically will be mass into acceleration and the work done will be nothing but your force into change in length if it is basically doing there will be this I mean moving car will be moving certain distance let us say dl and then will be f dl and f is nothing but mass into acceleration and if you look at this acceleration is nothing but change in velocity with respect to time right dv by dt and if you look at this dl by dt if I just take this this is nothing but your what right so this is nothing but your what this is that is nothing but your velocity itself so utility you mass into velocity into change in velocity between station 1 to 2 you can say and then if you integrate keeping this mass mass is not changing you know like then it will be the kind uh, work done is basically m delta v square by 2 and that is nothing but your kinetic energy right and this what is the reference for this with reference is with respect to the road right is not it. So, that means the all the displacement whatever we are doing uh, the velocity acceleration we are having reference to the road right. So, this kinetic energy was coined for the first time by Thomas Young in 1807 and later on it was used uh, by Lord Kelvin in thermodynamic around 1856. Of course, the kinetic energy per unit mass will be nothing but your delta V uh, square by 2, it is joule per kg and this is a specific kinetic energy, right. So, uh, let me take another example, right. Uh, you might have observed lot of construction work is going on in our campus, am I right, okay. So, uh, I think few years back I observed a person is uh, standing on the ground and there is a one floor kind of thing right and there is another person standing ok, one laborer and he is throwing the stone not stone the brick rather brick to the towards the person who is standing on the first floor ok and he is catching. So, what is happening? that brick you know. So, a person will be throwing a brick and another person will be catching. So, that means it will be throwing with certain velocity that means certain kinetic energy therefore, it is moving yes or no am I right ok. So, then once it will keep there right or that person that means this kinetic energy what will happen when that person will catch or about to catch what will happen to that energy. That means velocity will coming to the 0 almost right. So, what will be that energy kinetic energy will it be kinetic energy will be there when the person is about to catch or already catch caught no no. So, what is that energy where the energy has gone eh? Eh? potential energy right and that what is the frame of reference frame of reference is your you fix a coordinate system in the floor and then you talk about it. Now, you know this is I have seen in this campus during winter season right and a poor fellow laborer who is doing this job which was quite risky suppose that person will lose his concentration who is trying to catch it which is coming with a velocity very right and a mass what will happen to him he will be hospitalized am I right. Now question arises I am posing a question to you people as an engineer can you think of something so that that kind of risk you will not get ok. There comes into picture the thermodynamic how to analyze and what is the way of doing that. That means you need to be sensitive to the people's need so that you can devise a proper device 
such that you know the problem of people can be solved. So that is the engineering aspect one has to think. So a sensitive person can be a good engineer. Am I right? <coughs> so coming back to that potential energy, you know you have already talked about potential energy. You might have seen in this place that is a lot of trees are there, right? And some of you might be in the southern part of the country, right? Where there is a let's say coconut tree, very tall trees, coconut trees are very tall earlier days, nowadays with a hybrid it becomes small, okay. Now let's say the, the coconut is attached to the tree, what will be its potential energy at a very height, let's say maybe 4 meter kind of thing or maybe 5 meter, right, what will be its potential energy? Potential energy I am talking about because we are discussing about potential energy. What will be? Will be? Zero because it is attached. But let us say by due to something or somebody cut it, then it is falling. What will happen? It will be gaining, but just after getting cut, it will be having a potential energy which is equal to the height, whatever it is there. Am I right? So, and then after that when it will fall down it will be gaining kinetic energy that means potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. So if you look at there is a mass which is having a velocity v1 and mass of 1 kg it is falling down and uh, you know and reaching the z2 with a velocity v2 and m2 is equal 1 kg of course the same mass. So we need to find out potential energy. So potential energy basically mass into g that is the acceleration due to gravity and change in the elevation right and that will give you the potential energy and uh, the potential energy if I take this in this example that mass is 1 kg and g is 9.81 meter per second square and Z1 minus Z2 is nothing but 1 meter, it will be something 9.81 joule you can get from this example what I have taken here. So the potential energy was basically coined much later by Rankine, you know William Rankine who was a pioneer in the one of the telwards in thermodynamics in 1856. And uh, of course the specific potential energy is nothing but your potential energy per unit mass that is equal to the g into delta z what is change in elevation basically. So if you look at these are the kind of energy uh, what we will be dealing with kinetic energy and potential energy, potential energy will be also various kinds you know it is not uh, this potential energy what I have just now discussed is based due to the gravity, gravitational effect there might be magnetic effect there might be you know other effects right kind of thing. So potential energy will be various kinds kind of thing and these quantities you know what are the quantities involved in this you have seen is basically mass, velocity and acceleration kind of things right and these are observable quantities you can observe you can measure it very easily right and it is these are the energy when you talk about it is very easy to quantify it because you know the properties uh, associated with and observable quantities so that uh, you can you know measure it. So what are the other forms of macroscopic energy any idea these are all very common you will people will be knowing but what are the others? I have already talked about it you know like uh, what I told electrical energy like you know magnetic surface tension and several others you know kind of things will be various other forms of microscopic energy one can think of. <coughs> so we will be dealing mostly with the microscopic form of forms of energy in the thermodynamics right. But however I will just try to give you the flavor of the various microscopic forms of energy we will be discussing now. So this is as I told related to the molecular structure like how it is you know 
let's say whether it is a monoatomic or diatomic or polyatomic or triatomic molecules and what are the you know its interaction with themselves like basically degree of the molecular activities will be you know important for this energy right and the all the material will be consists of large number of you know particles what we call molecules atoms ions electrons and other things and all you know will be basically having possessing some energy and those energy is known as microscopic form of energy so all these uh, particles are in all the time in motion right they will be in a continuous motion and possessing some form of energy so <coughs> these uh, things we uh, these forms of energy is uh, basically can be of think of let's say that is a what to call a molecule right which if it is there having let's say this is having x direction right let's say this is x direction this is y direction this is z direction and this can translate this molecule can move from one either in x direction or y direction or z direction right and this whenever it is moving with you know uh, particular directions or kind of things you know it can be uh, known as the translational energy because it is moving and as it is moving it will be possessing certain kinetic energy and this kinetic energy is basically known as the microscopic form of energy for example i am considering a molecule and then molecule having mass m and it is moving with a velocity v keep in mind that this is don't think uh, this is not that you know the each molecule will be moving with the same velocity for example if i take a cylinder is it each molecule will be moving at same velocity no maybe mass is same it provided the molecule is same let's say nitrogen gas cylinder right and the motion also will be very random it will be colliding each other so it may go and you know bump into the wall or it may be go and collide with another molecule of course if it is inert no reaction is taking place right kind of thing so therefore this will be have different i have just considered for a single molecule therefore i am writing this otherwise it will be each molecule having different velocity maybe mass is same if the molecule uh, the gas is same so and if you consider there might be diatomic or polyatomic molecule which can rotate like molecule can translate it can rotate right and rotate about center of mass so therefore that will be basically rotational energy you can think of moment of uh, is equal to i omega square by 2 and i is the moment uh, of inertia about the center of mass and it is rotating with a certain angular velocity so you can calculate for each molecule then you think of about whatever the number of molecule it will be having in a system then it is very complex you know and you will have to look at so that is basically uh, the rotational if you look at there is another rotational kinetic energy that means molecule will having kinetic energy molecule will be having rotational energy and the molecule can also vibrate within certain mean position with this certain mean position it will be vibrating right if it is vibrating that is known as vibrational energy in a microscopic form that means <coughs> particularly at low temperature like energy of gas is mostly due to the translational and rotational right but high temperature vibrational modes contribute more to the energy of the molecule because if you look at microscopic energy it will be sum of all rotational uh, and uh, kinetic energy and vibrational energy right and so what we call this total uh, energy that means you know total uh, basically translational rotational and vibrational energy we call it basically kinetic energy of the molecule because it is motion all the time motion and that we call it as a sensible energy why you call it sensible energy because we can measure it we can measure in terms of let's say temperature and other things right so therefore we call it as a sensible energy 
but however the uh, the portion of internal energy associated with the kinetic energy of molecule is known as sensor energy. This is a little more definition what we are given because these are all internal energy, right. This is one form because due to the motion, uh, you know, it will be this energy is coming. Therefore, uh, we call it uh, as a, you know, kinetic energy of the molecules. <coughs> And if we just sum it up that uh, translational energy and rotational kinetic is and vibrational kinetic that is nothing but your sensible energy and we call also in case of sensible enthalpy right we will be dealing with that. And the average velocity and degree of activity molecules are basically as I told earlier that proportional to the temperature of the gas right. Because you know like if temperature is higher, what will happen to the molecules? Molecules will be moving at a higher velocity, am I right? Yes or no? Right? It is similar to yourself. Suppose you are very much agitated, your energy level will be higher, am I right? Okay? Yes or no? So that means you know you are by your, you know become hot, so that you know your mind become hot so that your agitation level increases. So similarly also the molecules right in the gas and at higher temperature molecule possess higher kinetic energy and system has higher internal energy. That means at a higher temperature you know uh, because the molecule will be having a higher energy level kinetic energy that means vibrational uh, sorry uh, the your translational and rotational will be very this thing and so also vibrational. So then you will get a higher internal energy. So, if you look at this uh, thing, he will be knowing. I am like we can sum it up like half u is equal to half n f r t, where n is the number of moles and f is the degree of freedom, right? And r is the universal gas constant and t is the temperature. And this uh, one can derive from the kinetic theory of gases, right? You must have exposed to in your plus two science. And if you look at the F, the degree of freedom for monoatomic gases will be 3, right. It will be only the translational, right, 3 in the 3 direction. And whereas for the uh, diatomic, the F will be basically 5, provided it is not very high temperature, right. And for triatomic, it is a 6, because 2 rotational for the diatomic, apart from the 3 translational. And for triatomic, it is a 3 rotational. We are assuming that you know vibrational form of energy is you know not there, right? That is the assumption, and, and that will be true only at a very moderate temperature or very high temperature. The internal energy is also associated with the intermolecular forces between you know molecules of the system, right? There will be if you look at that is a you know in case of both the solid or liquid or the you know gas there will be forces between the molecules for say let us say nitrogen gas if I take if I take water water molecule will be having a force they are not to they try to stay together you know unlike of course gas right and uh, then that intermolecular forces you know which uh, because of some forces and that, that intermolecular forces is basically will be strongest in case of solid and weakest in case of gas. Therefore, that is the reason why you know solid will can take a higher stress, am I right? Because of you know if his pressure is applied, the stress it can take a stress, it is togetherness you know that will be together, in the lattice structure it will be there. So, so, if you look at that is exactly the point I was trying to make is here that we are the solid of course this is shown two dimensional but actually it is three dimensional that means perpendicular to this will be having and people have made some spring kind of a system like where the this molecule can vibrate right if you look at the molecule can vibrate like this and within the mean position. And whereas the liquid, it will be together, but not really in a particular lattice structure. 
but it will be uh, you know like because of bounded by the uh, molecule of water. but whereas the gas the molecule will be far apart each other and may, they may collide in each other but it will be there will be some forces existing between the uh, what you call molecules in the gas as well so when the sufficient energy basically added to the molecules of solid or the liquid what will happen these intermolecular forces you know will be reduced and it became you know like uh, overcome this thing and it became converted into gas phase right or solid also can get into the liquid phase and this you know uh, makes the phase change process to occur because you are adding some you know amount of energy so that the they can overcome the molecules can overcome the molecular forces and this internal energy because you are you know having convert, having energy associated with the phase change process is known as the latent energy like you must be knowing like if i heat the water you know and then and put a thermometer there and then what will happen the in the beginning the water temperature will rise from the ambient to certain degree celsius right let's say something 90 uh, nine kind of things and then after that it will get evaporate after that there is no change in temperature right and but however you are giving heat and that heat will be helpful to converting this liquid into the its vapor let us say for example water then that heat that energy what we are supplying is known as latent heat latent energy and this is a one uh, form of what you call microscopic energy and if you just uh, you know look at the overall picture you know solid can be converted into the gas whenever in a heat you supply that is basically known as the sublimation and gas can be converted back into solid provided you extract the heat or the energy from the gas and the when you give <coughs> what you call heat, uh, heat energy to the solid it will be melted out to the liquid and we call it melting and when the liquid uh, you know from the liquid heat is being extracted we all get the freeze freezing right kind of things we know like you know nowadays very hot you get this ice you know water is converted to ice by this what you call freezing process similar liquid can be uh, vaporized into the gas by adding this uh, energy and the phase change process and so also the gas to liquid uh, phase change process is known as condensation. If you look at, if you go in this way, that means enthalpy of the system increases, you know, like in the upward direction as you go to the solid, to the gas, it will gas, you know, internal energy will be increasing, so also, you know, other parts. So, and uh, if you look at, see, uh, there will be a molecular bond between these forces if you look at the uh, solid as a result it will be solid liquid and gas and of course there is a plasma which we have not discussed right these are the various form uh, phases and uh, but beside this you know if you look at a, a you know in a, a molecule there will be some atom they will be joined together having some bond energy and then that energy associated with the atomic bond you know in a molecule we call it as a chemical energy and during the reaction what will be happening that this bond is being broken and then you will be you know like a, again new bond will be formed and some chemical energy will be released or it can be you know if it is uh, you know released then we call it as a exothermic reaction because it will be giving heat and if it is being absorbed is known as endothermic reaction and during chemical reaction this you know bonds new bonds are being uh, you know formed and while the old bonds are being broken so these are basically known as chemical energy which right and uh, there is a nuclear energy you know which is associated with the nuclear bond of atom right and which is uh, uh, quite much higher level that means the uh, in the nucleus itself there will be various particles and all together they are staying 
and if you bombard it and then large, large amount of energy being released. Of course, the, there is a known as nuclear uh, fusion and there is also nuclear fusion that where the you know uh, uh, these things will be coming together and then you will have to give large amount of amount of heat. If you look at nuclear uh, what you call fusion occurs in the star or in the sun where you give a large amount of energy and a very high temperature. If you look at something something uh, maybe 100 degree 100 bi million degree Celsius is required to have a this kind of reaction in sun and other places star. But generally it is not successful we have not done that few uh, what you call fuse until now but however the fusion reaction is being taken away we use some uranium kind of things and it gives large amount of energy than that of your chemical bond. If for example like if you uh, you know um, what you call uh, use 1 kg of uranium and then subjected to this nuclear fusion reaction uh, let us say you 235 kind of thing it can give you something 6.7 into 10 power to 10 uh, kilojoules which is a very huge amount and uh, if you look at that amount which will be equivalent to something 3000 of the coal when it is burnt you know whatever the heat will be uh, generated during the burning of 3000 tons of coal you know can be obtained just by burn, by uh, you know um, react uh, under uh, by just using the 1 kg of uranium you know is very small but however the nuclear energy is having a lot of problems particularly in our country where there is a populace and one has to be very careful about the nuclear energy and I must tell you that uh, um, it is very difficult to handle any accident occurs and because of nuclear radiation and unfortunately lot of nuclear waste are coming to our country to my knowledge I mean whatever I have heard one has to be very careful otherwise it is a very difficult place to uh, live and then uh, of course some of all microscopic form of energy whatever we have discussed till now is basically internal energy which is coined by the Thomas Young in 1807 and internal energy is basically sensible latent chemical nuclear energy right that is the the disorganized form of energy right these are all disorganized it is not organized am I right. So therefore uh, if you look at the main objective of the thermodynamics if you look at from the application point of view that to convert this disorganized form of energy into organized form of energy right. So that we can utilize this you know whatever the latent uh, or the nature is basically let me put other way around that nature have stored some energy and we should utilize for our purposes. And the microscopic form of energy is quite difficult to measure directly because it is very difficult you can have a model and say look it is like this but you cannot really measure and the total energy what we will be talking about is not only the internal energy but the what you call the potential energy and kinetic energy and potential energy need not to be confined to only gravitational potential energy due to gravity. gravity but it can be due to other things. <coughs> so the specific total energy as I told it is in a total energy per unit mass and as I told uh, that main task of thermodynamics is to devise ways and means to convert this internal energy into useful form of energy that we call it as a work. <coughs> And uh, let us look at like uh, why we call it as a uh, basically unorganized form of energy, right. <coughs> so uh, if you look at there is a wheel you know and this is a dam like dam is basically a, a, you know like water being stored and uh, putting this uh, putting a dam high and this will be having certain amount of uh, this thing stopped and then water is allowed to flow through this and it will be a, known as a you know Pelton wheel and the water will be coming with certain velocity very high velocity here because this is having potential energy right 
because of height and then this is converted into kinetic energy, very high and when it is kinetic energy that you know impinge into this uh, vein of the uh, turbine you can think of and you will get the energy, it will be rotated and you will load it and then you will get the mechanical energy which we can use for our power generation and everything. But however, if I place this what you call uh, turbine blade and then we call it basically belt and wheel here, right? And can it give the uh, me power work done? Is it possible? So, I am getting here the work done and the some power I am generating, right? Mechanical power and then we will convert into electrical, okay? Using gen set. Now, the same wheel I will put it here on the upstream of the dam. Can I get some work done? Yes or no? Certainly no, right? Because although the energy is there, it is having potential energy, right? It is having molecules are moving and then it is interacting, you know, like having this thing, but it is uh, these molecules are coming and impinging into the these wheels. But these are not in a, it is occurring at a random manner, but here it is in an organized manner, like it will be all this thing will be going in direction and go on impinging into the uh, what you call turbine blade, am I right? So, therefore, the microscopic kinetic energy is a form of energy because we have converted into uh, macroscopic kinetic energy and which is much more useful than the disorganized microscopic kinetic because these are also microscopic kinetic energy, these are moving. Both are kinetic, this is kinetic energy and these are also kinetic energy, but one is microscopic form, other is the macroscopic form. So, objective of basically thermodynamics is to convert this microscopic form of energy or unorganized form of energy into organized form. So, that is true with a country also, am I right? Yes or no? You must be knowing the history, right? We are invaded by various people. India was a populous country earlier also, today also, right? See, the few people came with a very organized manner, they could win over our land and rule over this, am I right? So, because we are not organized, similarly, today the market forces are what you call invading our cultural heritage, spoiling. So, because we are not organized, therefore, we could not really resist the cultural invasion what we are being affected today. So, therefore, it is very important to learn, you know, like that we will have to be organized, right? That is why we are having army which is organized so that they can, you know, nullify the invader's intention to uh, come to this land and then maybe create some problem. So, therefore, it is important to uh, be organized in your case. For example, the education, the objective of education is what? You people are being educated or being exposed to the what you call teaching and learning for last 20 years, right? or maybe little less, okay. So, what is the meaning? Meaning is that your mind is, you know, will be vacillating all the time. So, you should have to develop your concentration level and get trained so that you will be organized in your mind to deliver some kind of work. So, now as I told uh, that energy is always, you know, associated with the environment and whenever we are trying to harness the energy. So, uh, it is important that we should take care of environment and there is a global concern for the what you call environment today and was it there in earlier days or not? It was there, but do we never uh, you know looking at that uh, that seriously because uh, we are not using the technology that blatantly. But today we are using for our own comfort, but we are spoiling and uh, uh, from the energy devices, the pollutants emitted from the during the combustion of fossil fuels or you know like global warming and the smoke and the sea drain we are getting. You might be aware that you know in uh, particularly earlier days people were asked to go and uh, you know have a good uh, enjoyable 
shower in the first rain. Today people are asking, don't do that. Why? You will be in trouble. Your skin will be in trouble. Okay. Right. So, because of acid and smoke and uh, unfortunately our country, mo uh, most of the cities are uh, really, really with the uh, environmental uh, problems because we are not taking care of it and we should as a conscious citizen, citizen we should take care of that. And, and, and then and thermodynamic comes into picture. The environment pollution are you know reach a very high level across the globe and India is one of them and in the name of development uh, and then uh, quality of life we are uh, you know using energy blatantly and then also spoiling. So you know like uh, motor vehicles are the largest source of air pollution and we need to devise you know uh, better energy devices with the help of thermodynamics so that we can uh, devise better uh, environmental friendly you know gaskets for our use and uh, <coughs> therefore the energy conversion processes are you know often accompanied by environmental pollution kind of things we need to take care of. It. <coughs> so when we talk about uh, this uh, you know uh, kind of thermodynamic system we always uh, dealing with a system which will be in equilibrium right. And uh, because we are dealing with classical thermodynamics, right, as I told, we are not interested in the uh, microscopic way of the things in molecules and interacting, or not, we are basically looking at the gross way, macroscopic aspect of that. So, therefore, and our uh, this thing will be in equilibrium. <coughs> and when we will be in equilibrium, you know, the equilibrium means basically state of balance. Right. If the state of balance is there, we need to see like uh, whenever the system will be interacting with the surrounding, it will be attaining equilibrium, right? And then we will find out what are the changes as occur. So, in the process, that means the equilibrium means the unbalanced uh, uh, potentials, that means the driving force, you know, uh, should be zero. Right? There won't be any driving force within the system, then only we can look at it. That means in the beginning there will be an equilibrium, then whenever there is interaction, there will be system will be interacting with surrounding, again it will attain the equilibrium, then we will be talking about the change. Right? That we will be doing in this kind of thing. And when you say that equilibrium, okay, let us understand what do we mean by equilibrium. Okay? We will take this example. There is a copper rod, right, and there is a two bath. One is at 100 degrees Celsius. It is a boiling water, right? Temperature remain constant. Am I right or wrong? Okay, because is the temperature will change if I go on giving heat, right? Unless the last drop of water is there in this vessel, it will not change. Okay, and similarly, we will talk about the another bath. We call it as a ice bath, right? The 0 degree Celsius kind of thing and this is a copper rod we have connected with the boat to you know <coughs> start with and uh, what will happen here that means this is at high temperature this is the boiling water bath which is at 100 degree Celsius the ice water bath is at 0 degree Celsius what will happen to the heat heat will be flowing from higher temperature to the lower temperature because of gradient. Am I right or wrong? Now, when you do that, so will it reach equilibrium? Let us say after one hour, what will happen to the temperature in the copper rod? Copper is a good conductor of heat, so also electricity, right? So, here we are concerned about heat. So, what will happen to that? Will it attain equilibrium or not? Huh? Yes, after one hour or after two hours, maybe in the beginning it will not, right? But later on it will be, if I give sufficient time. Do you agree with me or not? How many of people agree with me? But that means few people are not agreeing, right? 
few people are not agreeing that it will not reach equilibrium. Okay. So, what I am considering this uh, what you call this copper is our system, copper rod is our system. Okay. That means, whatever the uh, diameter length it is having that is our system boundary, surfaces you know all those things are our system boundary. So, let us look at what is happening. That means, if you look at here, you know this is a temperature and after you know this thing like uh, <coughs> the temperature at point A will be here, it is some closer to the 100 degree Celsius and B it will be in between and C is corresponding to the lowest temperature because it is lowest is the 0 degree Celsius here, right. But that means if you look at this system itself, what is happening? The system, the temperature gradient is there because the temperature at A is not equal to temperature at B is equal to not equal to at C, am I right? Then only it will be equilibrium. There will be, there is a gradient here, the temperature is changing. That means the heat at the temperature at A will be much higher than the temperature at B. There is a gradient, so heat will be flowing, all the time heat will be flowing. That means it has not reached a, what you call? equilibrium. However, it has reached a steady state. Am I right? Now you understand what do you mean by steady state and what do you mean by equilibrium? Are you, are you getting my point? What I am trying to say? I think <coughs> so. Now, what I will do? I will take this heat copper rod and insulate it right and allow it to homogenize that means the temperature you know will be become like this some average temperature you will get and uniform temperature attain and system is said to attain the equilibrium right then only that means I need to isolate it otherwise no. So, that is basically what you call as a reach a equilibrium. But unless I iso isolate means basically uh, isolate it from its surrounding and also the heat source and you know heat, heat uh, bath and the cold bath right those are basically surrounding for it am I right. So, that means equilibrium means absence of any spontaneous change when the system is isolated right. In other words all the microscopic properties remain uniform and constant right because if you look at the temperature is remaining constant across this whole range it's not changing right it's not changing with respect to time as well when it is insulated but however the microscopic activities go on right the molecules will be vibrating right in this case copper rod the molecules will be vibrating, but because of temperature you know, but however the it will be temperature will be same right. So, the macroscopically it will be you know uniform kind of thing property. So, when when a system you know is in uh, basically thermodynamic equilibrium because we will be talking about equilibrium all the time and then looking at it. So, we can say that a system he attains a thermodynamic equilibrium only when it will attain the thermal equilibrium, mechanical equilibrium and chemical equilibrium and there is another one which is basically phase equilibrium right. We will be discussing about all those things. That means, uh, uh, in the next lecture, right, and uh, I will stop over here.